now that we've had a day, um, any, any other thoughts on, on Vlaco's decision? Because uh, I'll, 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 I'll tell you where I'm at. Because I've been seeing, I saw, I haven't seen too many people be, be in support of Vlaco, but I did see one. I did see comments from uh, our homie, Glenn Crooks. He's uh, the, the radio announcer for NYCFC. He's also a legendary coach in, in, in New Jersey, Co- coach at mm-hmm. Rutgers, uh, leg- coach Carly Lloyd, legendary coach, great guy. So he Some would ba- say he discovered Carly Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. He was basically saying that that Vlaco's decision, like basically to, you know, don't pay attention to the noise, you know, that, that you know, this is, Vlaco believed that the players on the pitch could get the job done and could get a win, and that if if they ended up in they if they ended up scoring, everyone everyone would have been like Vlaco's a genius. He knew what he was doing. Well, yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> so where are we going? And, and now, and I, if the atomic bomb didn't work, Oppenheimer wouldn't have been made. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Yes. What are we talking about? <laughs> that, that's the only you know thing that would have been different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the point stands. <laughs> If the Barbie yeah. doll doesn't get very me, int- the Barbie movie yeah, doesn't yeah. get very me. Very interesting butterfly effect to focus on. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. just ridiculous. And I w- I'd like to remind everyone that Glenn Crooks is a fan of Arturo's Pizza. Quite possibly one of the worst pizzas <laughs> in Wait, New York City. I'm not too familiar with Arturo's, but uh, yeah, I mean, that uh, Alexis and, just and, Gl- and Glenn get into that every single time because Glenn always brings it up um, mm-hmm. about this pizza. All right. He loves it. And I said, I'm glad you do. It's the only reason they're still open. The, uh, <laughs> But the, yeah, I don't, I don't, I haven't heard anyone else besides Glenn be like, uh, go on, King. To <laughs> like, go. You know what I mean? Don't let anybody change you. Okay. Nah, they don't want you to win, <laughs> Blacko. <laughs> no, the rest of us want to win, dude. Uh, so yeah, no, I think the rest of us have a lot of questions. And I mean, yeah, I've had a day on it. I, I, Alana Cook got to get in there, bro. Um, I want to see a center back pairing. We've left it too late as far as I'm concerned. The only thing that saves Vlatko's skin right now is if Rose LaBelle is healthy enough to start the game and possibly go about 70. Yeah. If that's possible, then we'll be all right. Yeah, because then to, we could just park the bu- we could park the bus after that. If there has right. to, because I, I don't think there's any um, strong issue with the attack, the, like the attacking three. Even though, if you look at some of our YouTube comments on uh, on the on the on yesterday's show. A lot of people aren't happy with Alex Morgan. They're just like, "Yo, I, maybe she's maybe she's done. Maybe she's not the. She doesn't have to play all ninety. Maybe she doesn't have to necessarily even start." Um, I would say, calm yourselves if you're thinking that. You might not be wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying she's not a make your own shot, make your own, you know, make your own chance kind yeah. of a striker. She needs service, and that midfield, as far as I'm concerned, no disrespect to Andy Sullivan, no disrespect to Lindsey Horan. It's not really set up. Unless, you know, Rose Lavelle or Ashley Sanchez are in there. It's not really set up to give service to a to a pure nine like Alex Morgan. So I think you're seeing the effects of that. I think that's why you're seeing so much dynamism out of a Sophia Smith who can create her own shot. Yeah, I mean, the uh, yeah, the comments have, uh, have been interesting. I think p- people have been focusing on, on, on Andy Sullivan. There's, there is one comment I, I did want to uh read this was from uh, uh johnny p5216 uh i, I just mm. it's a longer comment long comment but essentially she, uh, uh, uh they said uh sullivan is good for one or two of these mistakes every big game go back and look that isn't coaching or anything her job there is to simply put her body in front of the 10 and stop her from progressing uh and it essentially kind of focusing on that, uh, so I, I think somebody else said this. Or it, it might be in the same comment somewhere else. It's a very long comment. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, but essentially that the um, that Andy Sullivan doesn't foul enough, that she that she's she's unwilling to foul players enough to to stop uh, uh, to stop them from advancing. And that's an interesting argument because as far as a defensive mid, you should. There should be a couple. You should get into a couple of little scraps from time to time. Yeah, you yeah, pick yeah, up a yeah, yellow. Yeah, no. Like you gotta, you gotta taste a little grass. Yeah, yeah. And and you so I, I, mean? could, I I could see that argument being made because you you wouldn't really say that about Julie Ertz. Julie Ertz no. will <laughs> knock. She'll get stuck in, bro. <laughs> She'll knock somebody down, bro. Um, yeah. so- um, I don't I don't hate that. And I do think like when you see a player that doesn't foul enough, it's usually a sign that they're not. You know, doing the th- doing certain things that would 
create doubt in that number 10 of going near them. Right, you know right. what I mean? And I'm not simply talking about like abusing or getting started. That is a good point. That's not a terrible point. No, but, but I think I think Andy Sullivan is being put in a position where she really can't win. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that, but um, I would. You're the you're the you're the uh, the the defensive midfielder protecting a center back and a former center back. Yeah, yeah. So it, typically, if you had two really good center backs behind you, you would do enough to slow down the attack, and then these two center backs would stop it. Yeah. Now what you have is a situation where one of those center backs isn't exactly in her perfect position. So you're not getting this is a World Cup. This is a World yeah, Cup. Yeah, this but is where I, you got to field your best 11. I, I'll say this, but I, I, I'll, I trust Juilliard's as center back more than I trust Andy Sullivan at the six right now. Mm. That, that's essentially what I'm saying. So the um, I, I, as far as a, a, a you know, I, I wouldn't say that she can't win. I think it's a. Yeah, it's uh the the midfield shouldn't be getting cooked like this. That's I mean that's we, we're not used to seeing something like that where we're getting overrun. The U.S. is going to have more possession in pretty much every all of these World Cup matches. We we know that. So the midfield should when they lose the ball should be hard pressed and focused on recovering the ball. And if that means like you got to be aggressive, got to foul a little bit. Then that's that, that's what the job calls for. Uh, I, when I think you of heard Andy it Sullivan, here first, you got to get a little sturdy. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, so so that that you know, I, I I think that's an interesting um, insight in 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 how the the how the Netherlands match like uh, like ended up because that was a um, you know again some people like Glenn is essentially saying like not a big deal and you know. Even in in 2019, we did a uh, uh, draw a game as well in in, in the group stages. But yeah, this just... and let's be honest, Portugal, we should be able to beat them easily. Yeah, yeah. But if they... we lose to Portugal, that it's catastrophic. But it's just so the... if we beat Portugal, we go through. But the... I I'm with you. I'm with you. This isn't. We're not walking in fresh. Like, hey, game... look at us beating everybody. The game is so winnable. The game against Netherlands was winnable mm -hmm. in in my mind. I mean, this. Uh, I and I just again, I'll say the same thing. It, the the result is on Vlaco's uh uh you know hands. I mean this is it, it's not you know it's it's still a draw. It's not the end of the world, but um just a disappoint disappointing decision uh because it could have been uh, so much more um fruitful uh if it just made a couple subs, just gave uh, some other players some burn and stuff like that. Yeah, so so frustrating, but uh but it is what it is.